What's up guys, Artist Version 1 here, and welcome back to another edition of Stories No One Asked For, the podcast. And if you don't know by now, well, a few years ago I wrote a little book called, well, Stories No One Asked For. And upon numerous attempts of trying to write a follow-up, just couldn't focus, couldn't find that focus to do it. And at one time I, I gave up halfway through the book. <laughs> so I figured why not take those stories that I would write for another book and verbalize them into a podcast, which is what we do here on Stories No One Asked For, the podcast. And sometimes I bring on guests to uh, tell the stories that you didn't ask for either. Uh, and tonight, tonight we're going to talk about one of my retail jobs that I had, or I wouldn't say retail, food-related jobs, which was uh, at one time planned as my second book, uh, Retail Hell and the Fire from the Other Side of the Counter. Uh, but I actually gave up. You know, I couldn't figure out how to write about my own life. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, but uh, before we get into uh, that job here, um, I want to give a quick shout out to the great people over at MoviesRUSA.biz, proud sponsors of the Stories No One Asked For, uh, the podcast um, there. And if you don't know what MoviesRUSA.biz is yet, well, I mean, head on over and you can find those hard to find movies and TV shows or those uh, streaming only shows and they put them on physical media there for you, Blu-ray or DVD um, and they put them on there for a great reasonable price and if that price just isn't reasonable enough for you, you can use my checkout code that is artist, A-R-T-I-S-T at checkout and you will save 50% on your entire purchase and if that wasn't enough for you, you're going to get free first class shipping on top of all that, and they just released it. I've been waiting for it. They just released the new Mean Girls movie on Blu-ray, the musical one. So if you're dying to see that, didn't make it to the theaters, don't want to pay the $20 rental fee on digital, well, pay $16 with my checkout code and keep it forever. Um, plus, they have 3,500 other titles to choose from, and if you just can't find what you're looking for, email him. He's more than happy to take a request. You know, so uh, head on over to moviesrusa.biz. Find what you're looking for. Um, yeah, they're uh, they're not only a sponsor; I'm a customer. I love them. So we're going to talk about uh, Pizza Hut here tonight um, and why I hate them. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about some adventures I had there, and uh, we're going to talk about my adventure uh, eventual firing that I had here. So yeah. Um, so let's, but first we got to backtrack some to Hy-Vee. Um, I, I was let go from Hy-Vee, as I mentioned in a previous episode, and I was looking for jobs, you know, um, I was making 1075 an hour at, uh, Hy-Vee and to, at the time that was like fucking the most I was ever making at a job, you know, like I was like, holy shit, this is good money. And then I was like, no. Oh, and I knew I was going to have to pay, take a pay cut somewhere. So, like, I'm applying for jobs here and there. And it got down to it where, like, I'm running out of places. You know? Like, either people... I was I almost was hired at Little Caesars, but they were like, oh, you want too many hours. Now, mind you, at Hy-Vee, I was getting, like, anywhere between 18, 18 hours to... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, um... Yeah, 18 to 32. It just depended on the week, you know? And at Little Caesars, they're like, well, how many hours are you looking for? And I told them the same thing. I was just like, anywhere between 18 and 32 is fine with me. And they said, oh, you want too many hours. I'm like, 18? Listen, I know 18 to 32 is a wide range, but like, what the fuck were you expecting me to say? Six? Like, I mean, whatever, you know? Like, I have fucking, I have bills to pay. I'm not, um, I'm saving up to fucking pay a gas bill and not buy a bike what the fuck so little caesars fell through so believe it or not it came down to Domino's and pizza hut now pizza hut i put in an application and didn't hear anything Domino's, i get a phone call and Domino's calls me and they're like hey can you come in this day for an interview i was like sure why not so i go up there and i start interviewing and guys like why Domino's?" and i'm like this and that you know you know all the bullshit interviewee questions you know and he's like, okay, well, I like what I hear here. Uh, you know, we pay $8 an hour. And I was like, oh, my God, dude, that's a $2.75 pay cut I'm having to take, you know? And I was like, eee. I'm like, is there any wiggle room on that, man, you know? 
I mean, I know you can't pay me what I was making at High V, but I mean, is there any wiggle room on that? He was like, well, I mean, we can probably get you up to about nine, but you'd have to be like a like a, a manager or something. And I'm like, okay, all right. Um, I'm like, you know, can I think about it? And he looks me dead in the eye and he says, yeah, sure, th think about it. Now, let me let me pause this right here. Let me preference this by saying, like, I know he wasn't going to wait, like, you know, three months for me to think about this. I know that, all right? So I spent, you know, this was a Wednesday I had this interview. So the next day I thought about it and I was like, you know what? $8 an hour is better than fucking $0 an hour. So you know what? I was like, fuck it, just take it, you know? So Friday came and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to call him on Friday because I'm pretty sure, you know, pizza night, Friday, he's going to be busy. I'm not going to call him. Saturday, I, I had the same thought process. So I was like, I'm not going to call him. Sunday, I called. And they're like, um, he's not here. The the manager guy. His name was Chris, I believe. I'm like, they're like, he's not here. I said, okay, cool. So I called Monday. Yeah, I was like, can I speak to Chris? They're like, yeah, hold on a minute. They literally had me on hold for 10 minutes. And finally, they came back. They're like... Yeah, he seems to be really busy. Could you call back? I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I called Tuesday. Tuesday, he wasn't there. I'm like, okay, cool. So we circled all the way back to Wednesday. So a week later, you know. So I call him. I finally get a hold of him. I was like, hey, Chris, this is Will. Uh, you know, I thought about it. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you up on that. And he's like, oh, well, oh, that position's been filled. And I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, you said I could think about this and shit. It's been a fucking week. Like, what the fuck, man? But my mouth said, oh, okay, thanks. Click, and I hung up. I was like, are you fucking for real? So I think like the next day I called Pizza Hut and said, hey, I submitted an application. Just wanted to, you know, follow up with that. And he was like, oh, yeah, let me see here. Yeah, you know what? Why don't you come in today? And we'll talk. I say, okay, cool. So I roll up there and um, he was just like, oh, hi, I'm Bill. And you must be Bill. I was like, no, I don't go by Bill. And he was like, oh, okay, what is it, William, Will? I was like, either one, you know. Um, basically, he was just like, he basically offered me the job on the spot. But he was just like, listen, I mainly need somebody here to answer the phones and take orders. None of my people here want to do that. Um, so maybe, you know, take, you know, answer the phone, take orders, you know, fold some boxes every now and then run the register. Is that something you're interested in doing? Minus the folding boxes thing. That was pretty much what I was doing at hy V was answering phones and running a register. So I was like, yeah. And, um, he, I was like, how much do you pay? He was like, uh, I can start you at eight twenty five. I'm like, shit, that's 25 cents for when Domino's was hiring. So, and so I was like, all right, I'm in. So, um, it actually started off fine there, you know, for the first like few months, you know, it, it was decent. All I had to do was answer phones and like, everybody was so nice, you know, like uh, uh, just about doing my job, you know, like when I was at Hy-Vee and did something, it was just like, okay, well you, you did it, you know, good for you, you know? Okay. I didn't really look for recognition, you know, at Hy-Vee, certain things I would, but not, you know. But, like, here, man, I'd just be like, uh, all right, guys, I'm heading out for tonight. And they're like, okay, well, well, thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, thanks for answering the phones. I'm like, that's that, that that's what you hired me for. And they're like, yeah, and we're saying thanks. I'm like, it, it was, like, so fucking foreign to me to hear that. You know, it was so foreign, you know, to get, like, appreciation and shit like that. That's what, like, blew my mind about this place, you know. And that's mainly what I did. I would fold boxes nightly. I would run the register. Uh, and, like, plus they let me listen to music as long as it wasn't too loud and shit and pause it in front of customers and everything. And it was real chill. Uh, about three, four months in is when the first incident happened. <laughs> because, like, uh, our manager, Bill, he found out that I was diabetic, you know? And we had to buy the 20-ounce drinks that we that we offered customers. We had to buy those. We got a discount on them, but we had to buy them. And all we had was Diet Pepsi. And like, I begged him to get Diet Mountain Dew because I was tired of Diet Pepsi. 
and they they carried Diet Mountain Dew. And um, but what Bill started doing, he would buy like twelve packs of like Mountain Dew, Dr Pepper, you know, fucking whatever, and put it in our walk-in for us to have, so we don't have to buy drinks and shit. So one day Bill was like, "Hey, Will, look what I got for you," and he had like Diet Seven Up, you know. He didn't know what I liked, you know, and I don't, I'm okay with Diet Seven Up. But he was just like, "See, now you can have something," and which was nice of him, which was really chill of him. I was just like, "Dude, that's awesome! Thanks, man," you know. And everything was fine for a bit. You know, next week comes, you know, and he, he restocks everybody's drinks from Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper, and he got me Diet Dr. Pepper and shit. I was like, right on. Next week comes, Diet 7 up again. I'm like, right on. That was the night it first happened, you know. So we had this <laughs> manager. Uh, his name was Matt. And, um, you know, I'm doing my thing, working the register, all that shit. And now I would bring my own drinks because, you know, again, I tend to get a little bored of the same drink over and over. So, like, if I'm drinking just Diet 7 Up all night, I'm going to get bored, you know. So, like, I would bring my own drinks, too. So I would have, like, in my bag, I would have, like, a Coke Zero. I would also have, like, a Diet Mountain Dew, you know, just, just, you know, something to break up the monotony. So what I would do during the night, I would probably bring one of my drinks out. So I'd probably have, like, a Powerade Zero, you know. Drank that, and then probably go grab one of the Diet 7-Ups that Bill bought for us, you know? Drank that. A little later, go to my bag, grab, you know, grab my Coke Zero, you know, drink that. Then I'll go grab another Diet 7-Up, you know? So, it's like, almost time for me to go. And I've repeated this process throughout the night, and I'm like on my third Diet 7-Up. And like, I pop it open, I take one sip. All of a sudden, the manager is just like, oh, Will, by the way, you're only allowed to have two drinks. And I just looked at him. And I was like, what? He was like, yeah, you know, um, our district manager, which I'm like, what? You know, our district manager says we should only be drinking two of those a day. And I'm just like, our manager, Bill, goes out and pays his own money to buy these drinks for us. So what the fuck does the regional manager have to do with the drinks that Bill bought. You know, like it was, my nose started bleeding thinking about it, you know? And I'm just like, I just, you know, it was, I know it's like a first world problem type of thing, but like, it's one of those things like it should have been explained to us, you know? Like, hey, if if they don't want us drinking them so much, then like, you know, fucking, hey, tell us that, you know, and shit. So I was like fucking like hot about it. So, um, I went to the back, I wrote a note for, you know, Bill had a desk and I wrote a note for Bill that says, you no longer need to buy me drinks. And I left it on the desk and I fucking left. I took like the whole can of like seven up, threw it in the trash and left, you know, cause I was done for the night. So the next day I get there and I'm like doing my shit and everything. And that manager, Matt, he was like, Will, Will, Will. Cause I'm walking away. I'm trying to ignore it. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, hey, I'm trying to apologize for last night. I was like, good for you. And I walked away. <laughs> you know, because, like, you know, I'm petty like that and shit. You know. Um, eventually, though, like, you know, my my hours were getting cut because I was just the phone person. You know, I was the phone person, like, Tuesday, Wednesday, th- uh, no, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I usually have Mondays and Tuesdays off. Um. So on Mondays and Tuesdays, we had another person that would work there with us, um, a girl, and eventually she stopped showing up. So uh, they started cutting my hours. So I asked one day, I was just like, hey, is there, you know, is there a way I can, you know, come in at this time and like we maybe do some extra stuff or something? And Bill's like, yeah, you know, because we actually had like, a, you know, we hired, you know, special people, you know, mentally handicapped, I guess would be a better word for it. And apparently while doing the prep work, you know, prepping the pans and all that stuff, she she apparently had a stroke in the back room. Yeah, I wasn't there for it, but apparently that happened. So he was like, yeah, you know what? She actually, you know, did the prep work. So you could come in those days and do the prep work. Now, that's where I fucked up because I thought I was doing prep work just for that week. You know, I ended up becoming the prep guy, you know, which I mean... Prep work is prep work at a Pizza Hut is okay to a degree, 
you know, but like when you have to do 75, you know, hand tossed pizzas and fucking, uh, you know, X amount of these and that it, 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 it gets really repetitive, really monotonous, really fucking quick. You know, there was some days I would just, you know, dread coming in. And I'm just like, oh, I don't want to do prep today. And then, you know, they hand me like 75 hand toss. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, and then I got to transport them all to the free. It, it, it's a pain in the ass. You know, trust me. It, it's 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 not a fun process. The only thing that was fun to do was probably the garlic knots just because I got to break up all the fucking breadsticks to do it. That was probably the only really fun part about it. Um, that and listening to music and shit. But, um, also they were trying to get another phone person in there because again, like unless somebody yelled, unless I yelled out, can somebody grab that? Nobody else would grab the phone. You know, I was mainly the phone person. So well, like if I'm on the phone with the customer and the phone's ringing, the, the other phone that is, you know, nobody else would grab the fucking phone. You know, so they were trying to get another phone person. So we had one girl, her name was Maddie. Maddie just stopped showing up to fucking work. You know, so then they hired one girl. I trained her how to do the phone, and everything like what I do, all this stuff. Trained her for three days. She stopped showing up after the after the third day. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" You know. So a little bit of time went on. Um, we get another girl in there. Again, same situation. I trained her for three days. After the third day, she stopped showing up. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding?" You know. One girl, she showed up for two days. No, she actually made it two weeks. Two weeks. But she actually missed more days than she actually worked in those two weeks. So they fired her. Um, And one girl, like, um, they're just like, okay, uh, Will, you watch the phone and you teach her how to do prep. I said, okay, yeah, I can do that for you, no problem. So I taught her how to do prep and everything. I was like, this is what you do. You do this and this. And she was like, okay, cool. Five minutes later, I see her walk out the door. I was like, what happened? They're like, what do you mean? I was like, homegirl just left. What? What's going on? They're like, what do you mean she left? I was like, I just saw her walk out the door. What's going on? She fucking quit. Right then and there. I was like, okay, uh, I guess I'll go do prep, I guess. You know? So I became the unofficial trainer I was supposed to become the official trainer, uh, but they said I needed to to learn how to be a cook, quote unquote cook, uh, to be the official trainer. But like whenever somebody got hired, I was the trainer for prep, register, uh, boxes and phone. You know, I, I was essentially the trainer for that stuff. Um, now, one thing that like I, I think I made it clear in the um you know, the, the acting episodes I did is that like, if you're not in charge of me, do not act like you're in charge of me, you know? So we had a guy there, uh, his name was, uh, Jacob. And at first Jacob was real, real cool to hang out with. Like if I was working with Jacob, then I'm more than likely going to have a good night. But that, that all changed because like, um, he kept trying to boss me around like he was in charge and he wasn't, he was, he was on the same level as me. The only thing that he did differently was make pizzas. That was the only thing he did differently. You know? So, like, he would always... Like, one night, I finally just fucking had it. He was like, hey, Will, go do a barrel of dishes. I was like, hey, when you're in charge, I'll get on that. And I walked away. And he was fucking livid. You know? So, one night, we we were we had a skeleton crew, man. You know, we, we were fucking... You know, it was like me, Jacob, and I think one other person... So, like, I'm literally doing the phones, running the register, folding boxes, doing the wings, and, like, uh, uh, you know, something else. I forgot what else it was. Uh, I'm literally doing all these things at once, you know? So, I finally had a second just to go, ah, you know, I had, I had like, that split second, but, ah, you know, just, just to breathe for a second. And Jacob looks at me. And he was just like, uh, hey, Will, do a barrel of dishes. And I was like, yeah, when you're in charge, I'll get on that. And just turned away from him, you know. And he was just like, you know what, Will? We're a team. We need to help the team. And I was just like, I've been doing five different things. That's when Bill walked up. <laughs> Bill was just like, hey, hey, you two cut it out. You know, because I was like, I'm over his fucking ass, you know. 
Um, and well, he would always have an attitude over the, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I can have an attitude. I'm not going to sit here and fucking argue one way about it. You know, I can have an attitude too, but this guy's attitude fucking just was, was second to none, you know, fucking ridiculous, man. Um, oh God, here's one. Okay. So, um, we had a manager in, sometimes we wouldn't have a manager for a night, so they'd get a manager from another store. And guy came in one week, and, like, he just wasn't very nice to me. But I didn't say anything. You know, I was like, fine, fucking whatever, dude. Do what you want, you know. So, um, the next week, he was there again. Now, let me preference this by, like, I need to be by my phone. Like, the, the store phone, not my cell phone. The store phone, because like, uh, how do, how do I explain this? So if we don't answer the phone in time, our calls go to a pizza hut call center. And if the pizza Hut call center takes the order, our store gets charged $2. So like, that was something like, you know, we really prided ourselves on when I was first hired. Like that was something it really commended me on. Like we had a 0%, um, miss call rate because of me. You know, and I'm not just saying that to my own horn. That actually happened, you know. So, me being right there by the phone was, was, you know, necessary. You know, it wasn't like just me being lazy. It was just me like, okay, I got to be right by this phone when it happens. Or, or close to it. So, like, I'd be folding boxes, but I'm close to the phone, you know. So, one night I'm sitting by the phone, and uh, one of the drivers come back. And, you know, apparently it was like a wrong address or something. And uh, he had a large pepperoni and sausage. So, like, me, one of the other drivers, and somebody else were like, fuck yeah, man, we're going to get some of this pizza and shit, because that's what happened. So, like, I, we get a, I get a plate, man, put three slices on there and shit, you know? So, I go sit down. I'm literally about to put the pizza to my mouth, and that manager from another store was just like, oh, well, if you're going to eat that, you got to go eat it in the back. So, knowing I need to be by the phone... And on the computer for, you know, so I can take orders and everything. I was like, well, if he's not going to let me eat up here, you know, and I just put these, you know, I just touched this with my dirty fucking hands and shit. Well, fuck it then, you know, so I threw him in the trash can, you know, and the way he looked at me was just, you know, like, like I fucking just dragged my nuts across his forehead, you know, um, and he was like, well, I didn't say you had to throw him away. I just said you had to go eat him in the back. And I was like dude, I need to be by the phone, you know, like, I can't go eat in the back and everything, I need to be by the phone, and if you're not gonna let me eat up front, I'm just, I'm just tossing them away, you know, and then he raises his voice at me, you know, he was like, what, yeah, but I didn't say you had to throw him away, and finally, one of the other drivers was just like, yeah, but he needs to be by the phone, like, they were even sticking up for me, like, he needs to be by the phone, then he raises raise his voice at her and then all hell broke loose you know so like then he said something to me I forgot I forgot what it was that triggered me but like I remember walking to the back and I was like you know what this is the second week in a row you've treated me like garbage and I just walked to the back because I was just like fuck this man you know over some fucking pizza and shit um uh what else do I got here you know um here's something that I did was very petty um you know, uh, we, uh, when I first got there, there was a there was a stool for me to sit on. You know, I take orders and everything. Eventually, the stool broke, so I went to Walmart and I bought a folding chair. Well, soon after that, the folding chair broke. You know, it turned out people were using the fucking chair like after I left and shit. So I was like, you know what? Just to be petty, because like that Jacob and shit, he would use the chair and shit. So just to be petty, I bought a padlock for the fucking chair. So, like, when I would leave at night, I would padlock the chair to where they couldn't unfold it. Just to be really fucking petty. Because, like, I didn't want them breaking the chair, for one. And secondly, you know, like, fuck, I don't want them using my shit when I'm there. I just kept saying, like, when my ch- when my chair goes up, your ass goes shut. That's what, you know. Um, uh, promotion. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, you know what? Let me tell you guys about some customer interactions, too. So... <laughs> Um, I get a call one night and you know, it's like carry out delivery. They're like, carry out. I was like, cool. What can I get for you? And he's like, can I get two 
orders of 16 piece wings. I was like, sure, no problem. Uh, sauce, and he was like, he told me the to sauce, and I was like, okay, that should be ready in about mm, 15, 20 minutes. He said, okay, cool. Well, he gets to the store, and apparently nobody did his wing order. You know? So I was like, oh, sorry about that, man. I'm going to throw those in for you right now. Well, I could tell he's not happy. Now, he goes ahead and pays for the wings, you know, but I can tell he's not happy. So I'm going back there now. The wings, the the bone-in wings, which he had, take about eight minutes to fry. Or is it six? No, it's six minutes. I'm sorry. Six minutes to fry. And he had 16 pieces. You know, so, I mean, that's two baskets, so that's 12 minutes a piece. 12 minutes for both, okay? So I, I drop him in the fryer and everything, and I'm waiting for him to get done. You know, all of a sudden, he he's yelling up front, like, God damn it! You know, I'm like, the fuck? They're like, well, you gotta hurry up with those wings. I was like, I can only go as fast as the fucking fryer can. You know? So, like, I pull them shits out the fryer. I get the sauce on them real quick. I shake them shits around. I run up front, and I was like, here you go, man. Sorry about that. And he's just like, never mind. I don't want them. You keep them. You said 15 minutes, and I'm just like, I'm just staring at him like, are you fucking for real? Like, dude, it's wings. It's not that serious, man. You know, and he did. He walked out and fucking left. So you know what I did? I fucking sat down in my chair and I ate his wings. That's what I did. And I did. I fucking sat there and ate them because, you, you know, fuck, man. Like, it wasn't that serious. Um, Here's one that fucking, oh, my God, to this day, I just don't get it. So, you know, people come in all the time and ask what your specials are. You know, on the phone, they ask what your specials are. You know, what are your specials? What are your specials? A lady and a guy came in one night. And um, me and my manager, Bill, are at the counter. And um, they're like, okay, what are your specials? I was like, you can get a large uh, one topping for $9.99. And they're like, wow, that's really expensive. I was like, yeah. And they're just like, you have anything else? Now, for carryout, we had another deal. It was a large cheese pizza for six ninety nine. That was only for carryout. Only for cheese pizza. That's it. Okay. I was like, well, you could also get a large cheese pizza for six ninety nine. This woman lost her fucking mind. She was like, a large cheese for six ninety nine? Are you for real? How do you how do you charge prices like that? You should be written up for that. Look, six ninety nine. I just look over at Bill. You know, and Bill just looks over at me, and I'm just like, what the fuck do you want us to do? She was like, that's ridiculous. We can make pizza cheaper at the store. And I just look at her. I was like, okay, have a good night. You know, she walks out, and I'm like, what the hell was that, Bill? She was, he was like, I don't know, but apparently I got to write you up. I was like, what the fuck? Like, she got she lost her mind over a six ninety nine pizza, which considering some of the other prices that we charge for shit at Pizza Hut, and considering the prices right now in twenty twenty four for Pizza Hut, oh god, six ninety nine is a fucking steal for that pizza. Um, something that we used to get a lot at Pizza Hut was prank calls. Man, one night we had twenty seven prank calls in a row. Because uh, apparently somebody put the the phone number on uh, Xbox Live and uh, called us and everything, and I had to, and I only know it's twenty seven because we had to. I had to go through the caller ID log for every single phone in the store and write down the time of every fucking prank call. Then here's the coup de gras to it: they um any any pizza that was ordered, the person had to pay for. It. So that was kind of cool, by the way. Uh, But one night, uh, there was a different prank call that, like, I lost my shit on. (laughs) So one night, uh, again, you get prank calls all the time, and they're usually stupid. You know, like, hey, is your refrigerator running? You know, like, I've had that one. You know? Uh, I think there was one night where, like, I was doing prep in the back. And, you know, I get a call, and it's just like, hey, is your refrigerator running? And I was just like, whatever, dude. Click hung up. They called right back. And I was like, dude, I have got so much work to do. I'm going to give you one shot at this. Take your best shot. And he was just like, um, um, uh, you're stupid. And I was like, hey, you fucked up. And I I hung up. So, so I get a call when I'm, I'm busy. I'm folding boxes. It's a busy night. 
You know, it's like a Friday night and shit. So I answered the phone. Thank you for calling Pizza Hut. This is Will. Carry out our delivery. And he was like, delivery. I was like, cool. And he was like, can you deliver to a light post? I was like, oh, fuck. Uh, typically, no. But, like, what's the address? And he does 864. Go fuck yourself street. Click. And he hung up. And I was like, oh, this motherfucker did not. Bad news is we have caller ID. And he didn't block his number. So I called the number back. And he picks up and hangs up. I was like, oh, not tonight, motherfucker. So I call it back again, and he picks up, but he doesn't hang up. He's waiting for me to say something. So, like, I know he's waiting for me to say something. So he picks up, and I was like, listen here, you little fuck. If you ever call back this number again, I'll kill you in front of your whole fucking family just so they can hear you scream. Click, and I hung up. So I went back to folding boxes. The next thing I know, phone rings. And I was like, don't answer it. They're like, why? I was like, if it's from Missouri, it's a prank call. And they look at it. They're like, it's from Missouri. I was like, yeah, it's a prank call. <laughs> you know? Because you're not going to call me and fucking, you know, get pissed at me. You're not going to prank me and then get pissed that you got, you know, told off. You know, that was like one of my things. Another thing that used to bother me is that people would call and give me their address. And I would repeat it back to them. And then they get mad at me because it's wrong. Like, they would call me, and they're like, uh, I'm like, okay, address? And they're like, all right, 873 Fifth Street. I'm like, all right, you said 873 Fifth Street? Yeah. Okay, cool. Then my driver would come to me. They're like, well, I, I went to this address. There is no 873 Fifth Street. I was like, what? That's what they, okay, let me call him. So I call him. I'm like, hey, my driver's trying to go to your street, but there is no 873 Fifth Street. They're like, what? I said 873 15th Street. I'm like, no, you didn't, because I even confirmed it with you. Fucking piss me off. Um, let's see, another one. Oh, you know, better than when they give me the wrong information is when they give me too much information. Like, you know, like, hey, okay, so just like, hey, pull in the driveway, come to the front door. That's all we need. Come to the front door, ring the doorbell. That's all we need. You know, that's all we need. You know, but some people would be like, hey, um, if you could just pull in the driveway and then like go through the gate and then at the gate, there's going to be a lock. You're going to need a three digit code for that lock. If you get the you get the three digits by subtracting the last two numbers of your social security. I'm like, fuck, man, just tell me what I need to get into the fucking gate. You know, like they would just give us so much more fucking information than what we needed. You know, um, what was this one? Oh, yeah. I think I mentioned this one before, but. Um, people would call and, you know, we have toppings, of course. So they would call and I'm like, uh, you know, what can I get for you? They're like, can I get a Supreme? Okay. A Supreme was pepperoni, sausage, onion, green pepper, mushroom. That's what it was. And you can add stuff to it, which fine. Go for it. Add, add, add your heart away. So they also want banana pepper, olive, um, you know, whatever fucking else we have, you know? So they would add like, you know, seven extra toppings and shit to it. So one night this happened, you know, they, they added like seven extra toppings to it. You know, I was like, okay, is that all for you? And they're like, is there anything else? I was like, in my brain, I was like, yeah, fucking mini donuts, but we don't fucking have that. Like, I mean, what else do you want? Or they would take something like a, they would take something like a Supreme and just like overcomplicate it. By which I mean, like, they would order a Supreme, which is, like I said, sausage, uh, pepperoni, mushroom, onion, green pepper. Okay? So instead of just, like, ordering a pepperoni pizza, they would just order a Supreme, but then take everything off but the pepperoni. I'm just like, why didn't, why didn't I just order a fucking pepperoni pizza? You know? Like, it was shit like that that customers used to just drive me up the wall with, you know? Um, eventually later on, I eventually quote unquote got promoted. Um, I was the whole time, the most of the time I was there, I was considered a CSR customer service rep. Uh, that's why I answered phones and all that stuff. But, you know, since I was doing so much other shit, you know, like I was doing wings, I was doing prep, all this stuff. They eventually upgraded me to cook, uh, which means I ran the cut table. Uh, which, oh boy, some nights on that table, man. Hmm. Um, so that's when I was, I was going to start learning to make pizzas. Uh, and I would take a shot at making some every now and then, but I wasn't that good on it. Um, so, but I was still training. 
And that leads into um, my firing because we finally had a girl come in. Um, and they're like, okay, show her how to do this stuff. I was like, okay. Showed her how to answer the phones. I'm like, all right, this is how you, you know, this is how you take orders. This is how you do this. Da, da, da. Register, da, 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 da. Uh, boxes, da, 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 da. prep, da, 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 da. all this stuff. Um, so she actually stayed. I was like, oh, wow, she actually stuck around and shit, you know? And she was actually real cool to talk to and everything. She was kind of weird. Like, she thought every drink was spicy, you know? Like, she, she, I mean, she would drink Pepsi, but, like, she was like, oh, spicy, you know? And I'm just like, it's fucking Pepsi, man, you know? One night, I think the night that this, the incident that happened, like, I, I hear a drink open, and I hear, mmm, spicy. And I turn around, she's drinking fucking water. And I'm like, you're drinking fucking water, you know? So, um, so anyway, so we have this new assistant manager come in and, um, we had bags at pizza, you know, to put breadsticks or wings or something like that in. And, but they were like a bitch to fucking open, man. Like we, we, any, everybody there at one time or another struggled with trying to get one of these bags open for something. So our new assistant manager, I forgot her. I think I want to say her name was Andrea. I think that was her name or Adrian. Andrea sounds more right. She bought like this stuff that like, uh, grocers use sometimes grocery stores use. It's like this pink shit that you put your fingers on and it's supposed to moisten your fingers where you could get the bags open easier. So I come into work one day and it's me, the, the, the girl that we hired that, you know, spicy, that girl. Um, and some other people, you know, so, um, I come in and apparently the, the girl is off doing prep or whatever, you know, I'm not thinking anything about it. And, um, so she's like, Oh, Hey, Will, by the way, we have this. And she shows me that pink stuff. And I was like, right on. And I was like, what's that for? <laughs> and she was just like, Oh, for the bags. And I did a finger motion. Like I licked my fingers and whoosh, you know, just kind of like, you know, like you would rub a pussy. You know, like, mm, mm, you know, but, it, you know, I, I meant it as like, you know, I just lick my fingers to get the bag, you know, but she, my assistant manager knew my humor. So she was just like, oh, God, Will, you're fucking funny. You know, she was like, I'm going to go outside and smoke a cigarette. I was like, I know you got to get one of these, you know, did that shit. And she was like, ah, fucking Will. And she went outside. I didn't think anything about it, you know. So this is six o'clock at night. You know, I'm working with that girl and everything like that. You know, the spicy, you know, spicy. I'm like, fucking drinking water. She fucking leaves. And now it's like, uh, 930, about 930 at night. Um, I get a, I get a phone call, you know, they just want to order a breadsticks. Cool. Take care of it. There's a lady sitting in the restaurant, you know, and she, she looks pissed, you know? So I was like, yes, ma'am, what can I do for you? She was like, I need to speak to a manager now. I was like, oh, absolutely. Andrea, uh, somebody needs to speak to you. So she comes up and she was like, yes, what can I help you with? She was like, I need to know who's been sexually harassing my daughter. And we're like, what the fuck? She was like, I'm, you know, I won't say her name, but she was like, I'm her mom. You know, the spicy girl. And we're like, oh, what the fuck? And she looks dead at me. I mean, like she darted her eyes right at me. And she was like, was it you? I was like, no, what the fuck? No. You know, like, this is the first time hearing about it. So, um, so Andrea and her, they go outside. And I'm like, what the fuck is going Who the fuck is sexually harassing her? And, she, you know, like, what the hell is going on? You know? So now the drivers are piling back in for a night because it's starting to get slow and everything. And, uh, the one, one, one driver we had named Dwayne, he, he worked at pizza for like 20 fucking years, 25 years, something like that. And he was like, what's going on? And I was just like, I don't know. The lady came in, you know, claimed I sexually harassed her daughter and fucking, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Dwayne's like, what? And I was like, yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. You know? So now we're all just like huddled up in there and we're fucking waiting, you know? So finally, after about an hour, Andrea comes to the door and she points at me to come outside. I'm like, so I go outside, and it's that girl who works there, her mom, her mom's wife, apparently, 
you know, Andrew's on the phone with our manager, Val, because we had a new manager at this point. And I'm just like, okay, what's going on? She was just like, do you want to tell you, you want to tell me how you sexually harassed my daughter? I'm like, what? I was like, she was like, don't play stupid with me, motherfucker. I'm like, I, I just look at Andrew. I'm like, do you want to tell me what this is about? <laughs> you know, because like I had no fucking idea what the hell was going on. You know, and she was like, don't play stupid with me. I'm like, I, I honestly don't know what you're talking about. You know. And she was like, if you're going to play stupid with me, I'll just call the fucking cops right now. And I'm just like, again, I look at Andrew. I'm like, what the fuck is this about? I probably didn't say fuck, but I was like, what is this about? And Andrew kind of whispered. She was like the finger thing. I was just like, that was between me and you. You know, and then that's when that girl spoke up. Like, no, you did it to me. I was like, what? No. Like, I was talking to her. We, you know, the pink stuff, you know, like, and. Her mom and her wife and fucking the girl involved, they would not let me get that word in edgewise. You know, they just kept insulting my character. Like, oh, do you have a kid? Yes, yes, I do. Oh, does she live here? Uh, No. Oh, thank God for that. You have a girlfriend? No. Oh, thank God for that. You know, just kept insulting my character and shit. You know, now I'm just like, you know what? Just, just yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. You're fucking ass off here. You know, like, are you stupid? Yes, ma'am. You know, just whatever they say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Just whatever I can say. Um, But, like, somehow in that, they got a quote-unquote admission of guilt. I don't know where they got that from, but according to them, I apparently confessed to it. I, I, your guess is as good as mine. So, at one point during this conversation, she looked, the mom looks at her wife and says, go get Devante. I don't know what the fuck that means. Whatever. So she disappears. And now again, this we're, we're still going back and forth about this. You know, like, well, why can't you just admit that you did it? Because I didn't fucking do it. I was talking to her. I was talking to my assistant manager. You know? Five minutes later, the car pulls back up and I see a large black man running towards me. And like, I tried to book it back into the store, but I'll admit he was quick. He fucking shoves me to the ground and I cover up real quick. I kind of cover up and then bam, 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 three shots, one more, you know? Uh, and he said something. I don't even remember what the fuck he said, to be honest. He said, he, I know he was yelling something at me, you know? Um, I hear Val on the phone, like what's going on, you know? Cause all they hear is like screaming, you know? So, um, you know, I have a missing tooth, you know, uh, it's been missing for a while. So the mom comes over and stands by my head and she's like, I should knock the rest of your fucking teeth out. And I remember saying, please don't. That I do remember saying. Um, and she was like, get it back on your feet like a man. I was just like, oh fuck. So I had to pull myself back up to my feet. Meanwhile, my arm feels like it's dangling off my fucking shoulder. You know, because, like, you know, I fell right on my fucking arm. You know, my head hurts. Because he he, he didn't sock me right in the head, but he got got in there. You know? So, now she's just like, uh, okay. So, what are we going to do about this? So, she's talking to my manager on the phone. She's like, okay, so you want this to go away? And she was like, yeah. So, what are we going to do about it? And Val was like, well, I have to terminate him. I was like, fuck, man, really? I didn't do anything. I didn't say that, you know? And she was like, okay. So she looks at me. She was like, you understand you're fired? I was like, yes, ma'am. You know? And she was like, okay, then. And she looks at my assistant manager, and she was like, if I ever hear that you're laughing at something like that again, I'll come back. You know? And at the time, there was an accusation going around that one of our managers was uh, stealing tips. It wasn't true. But she looks at she looks at the assistant manager, you know, and she was just like, and if I find out that cunt, Kara, is stealing tips, we're coming back for her ass. I was like, oh, shit. They're like, and then, th- then this woman had the audacity. After an hour of insulting my character... Telling somebody to telling her wife apparently to go get somebody to come back to beat my ass. 
She had the audacity to look at me and she'd be like, I'd go home and take some ibuprofen and put some ice on that. And I'm like, okay. So I go back inside the store and like one of the drivers just like, what the fuck happened? I was like, he, he attacked me. They're like, what? So I clock out because I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to call it a night. Um, <laughs> I think I've earned it. So I clock out and the first thing I fucking do is call Val my manager and she's not answering now call her again she's not answering so she texts me she was like i'll call you right back i said okay so i'm walk i i I leave the building to start walking home all of a sudden cops show up i'm like oh boy oh goody you know here we go so the mom looks at me and she goes do we need them and i'm like no you know i'm taking my happy ass home you know uh, the cop stops me. He's like, uh, so where are you heading? And I was like, I'm just heading home. I live right up the road here. And he's just like, so we got we got a report of some play fighting. That, that was l- literally what he said to me. And he was like, so what happened? And I gave him a rough version of what happened. I was like, I don't know. She thinks that I was sexually harassing her. Oh, fuck. I forgot that part. Oh, shit. So... Hold on. Before the cops came, before, you know, I went back and got my shit and everything. She wanted me to apologize to her, like to her daughter, you know? So I'm like, all right, this is the only way, like fucking, she, you know, going to get over this. So I looked at her and I was like, listen, apparently I said something. To, and then I stopped right there because I was like, if I say apparently, like fucking, you know, th- this is not going to end well. You know, so I just said, okay, listen, I said something that offended you. So for that, I apologize. You know, I forgot, I forgot I had to apologize to her. So anyway, back to the cop. So I tell the cop, like, I don't know, she thinks I sexually harassed her daughter and fucking this and that and all this stuff. And he's like, oh, okay, can I see your ID? I was like, yeah, sure. I could barely move my arm at this moment, you know, because it hurts so bad. So I'm able to get to my wallet and give my ID and everything. And, um, he's just like, okay, uh, well, you know what? He could see like the fucking pain I was into. He was like, you, you go ahead and head on out of here. That's, and then as he's doing that, uh, my boss is calling me. I was like, I got to take this. This is my boss. He says, okay. So I take it fucking Val calling me. And I was just like, Hey, and she's like, Hey, um, I was like, I didn't fucking do this Val. And she was like, I know, I know you didn't. I was like, they're, they're taking this way out of proportion, you know, like, okay, let me rephrase that. I did do what they said, but I didn't do it towards her. Me and Andrea were having a joke and she was like, okay, I understand. Um, so you know what, just, uh, we'll, we'll figure this out tomorrow. I said, okay. So I get a call the next day. Um, and it's like, Hey, can you come up to the store and like, uh, you know, write an affidavit. I said, all right. So I come up to the store and they're like, okay, here's a pen and paper. Start writing. I'm like, I can't move my right arm. And they're like, oh, oh, that's right. And they're like, can you type? I was like, yeah, I can type, you know? So they let me type the affidavit. I type that up. And, um, you know, I let them know, like, you know, I let her know that, like, we, we were fine as coworkers. You know, I even gave this girl my visor. You know, cause like I, I got a visor in like a pizza contest and shit, but like, I didn't, I didn't really like the visor. So uh, she was just like, Oh man, I really want a visor. I was like, shit, you can have mine here. Fuck. You know, like that's how like cool we were at work, you know? Uh, and let me preference this by saying she was 16, you know? So, you know, fuck if I want to hit on fucking 16 year olds, I'm not going to do it at work. I'll go to the fucking mall like a human being, you know, I'm kidding. That's a joke. Um, well, kind of, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I wrote this affidavit about what happened. And I even say like, Hey, and you, it's on camera. It was on camera. Uh, I'm like, look, if you look at camera three, you can see where he assaulted me da, 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 while I was on the clock, all this shit. So I had my affidavit to Val and she was like, okay. And, uh, we can't have you come to work until we figure this all out. I said, okay, cool. No problem. That was Saturday. All right. Sunday, we had to go somewhere. I forgot where it was. And, you know, it, it's right by my house. So I drive by it, and I see the girl's car there, and I see Andrea's car there. I'm like, 
what the fuck are they doing here? But I can't be here. So I was like, all right, fine, whatever, you know. Monday came. And I see them there again. I'm like, okay, what the fuck? You know, so I called and I got Val. And I was like, uh, I finally texted her. No, that's what it was. I texted her. I was like, Val, uh, is there a solution to this problem yet? Because I don't think it's fair that those two are working, but I'm missing out on a paycheck here. And about five minutes later, she calls me and she was just like, uh, so Will, I talked to the general man or the district manager. I forgot her name, you know, um, was it Carol? No, not Carol. Uh, there was Cheryl. And then we got, I don't know, whatever. She was like, I talked to the district manager and unfortunately we, we have to, we have to terminate you. But I was like, Val, I didn't fucking do it. And she was like, I know, but from her perspective, um, you know, we have to listen to her. And, and I was like, oh, fine. Uh, what are y'all going to do about him assaulting me on the clock then? And she, there was a pause and she was like, well, I guess that's up to you. And I'm like, are they daring me to fucking sue them? You know, like, whatever. Long story short, uh, I didn't sue them because, uh, we talked to a lawyer and like it, it, one of only one of the three made sense. And that was one. I didn't press any charges, which I was like, okay, I can kind of understand Two, I didn't go to the hospital, you know, which I, I mean, I, I really didn't have any injuries that, you know, went to the hospital for. And three, I literally found a job four days later. I was working at the trampoline park four days later, you know? And they're like, well, you found another job. I'm like, okay, why is that so bad? You know, what'd you want me to do? Fucking starve? You know? So, um, so that's why I didn't sue, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I was let go from pizza. Uh, and that's why I fucking can't stand pizza. Now I have not had pizza pizza since that fucking, or the night before that incident. Um, cause I was let go on, I was let go on 420. Believe it or not, that was the day I was like, oh, 420. Because on my birthday is when I got hired at the trampoline park. Uh, so, yeah. Um, side note, I just want to mention these two stories real quick. Um, th there was an incident where I, I did have to talk to the district manager. Because, you know, one thing that's big with me is like, don't tell me one thing and then fucking, you know, do another. Like, um, you know, the pandemic happened while I was working at Pizza Hut. And, uh, you know, we're wearing masks, paper masks, and then eventually cloth mask and shit. I was wearing this uh, luchador mask. Like, it, it, the face mask was like a luchador mask. And then they gave us official Pizza Hut mask. Right off the bat, because I was terrible at, you know, holding on to these masks. I was like, so, just let me ask right now. If I end up misplacing this mask, can I use an alternate mask? And they said, yeah, well, that's fine. Okay, cool. Literally three days later, I couldn't find the pizza and mask. Uh, I'm digging through my bag, and I was like, eh, I can't find it. So I put on the luchador mask, and they're like, oh, Will, you can't wear that. I was like, why not? And they're like, oh, you have to wear the pizza hut mask. I'm like, I just asked the other day if I could fucking wear this. Okay, fine. You know, so I put on a paper mask instead. And the other thing was... um, during the summertime, if anybody's ever worked in a pizza place, during the summertime, it gets hot. Hot in there, and people know me. I don't do well with heat. So, they allow me at my little desk, is what I called it. They allow me to put a fan there. So, like, I put a fan there and everything. I was like, fucking hey, man. So, like, when I take calls and everything, I can be like, ah, oh, yeah. You know, get some cool air. You know? Nobody said a word. Nobody said a fucking word. You know? So one day I'm on the cut table and it's hot. It's getting hot and everything. You know, I was like, fuck this. I'm going to get my fan. So I'll go get my fan, plug it in. I get it all nice and set up on me and everything. Yeah, man. You know, I turn around to do wings. I turn around, the fan's gone. I'm like, what the fuck happened? I was like, what happened to my fan? They're like, oh, you can't have a fan on the cut table. I'm like, what? Why? They're like, oh, because it's just not allowed. I was like, okay, fine. So the next day, I'm at my desk, you know, and 
I turned my fan on over there, and they're just like, Will, we told you you can't have a fan. I was like, I'm over here. I'm not even on cut table. They're like, yeah, Will, you can't have a fan over here, though. I'm like, okay, I've had one over here last year during the summertime, and it wasn't a problem. Now, all of a sudden, it's a problem. What the fuck? And they're like, yeah, Will, you can't have a fan. I'm like, it is 87 fuck degrees in here. They're like, I know, Will, but you can't have the fan. I was like, oh, you are kidding me. You know? So, the job did have its ups. You know, I mean, free pizza, breadsticks every now and then. Or discount pizza. I think we got like a 20% discount. That was pretty dope every now and then. Um, but, yeah, I, I the way they handled my firing, you know, what I, I think was... Um, it should be a note to anybody who's ever... If you get a job offer from pizza, that should be... Uh, more than all you need to know. Cause it'd be one thing if they're just like, we have to let you go, but you know, Hey, here's something for like, you know, them, you know, getting beat on the clock, you know, cause you know, the shit like that, but nope, you know, so there you go. There's a story that you didn't ask for. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and everything. And, uh, hopefully next week or the week after, cause I've been doing these bi-weekly lately. Uh, we should have uh, justice on cause justice was like, give me a few more nights. Um, or I'll figure out something else. So hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode until next week. I'm the Ars version one. And remember be breezy.